you've got two complete polar opposites now running for president of the United States. If you were psychoanalyzing Trump and Kamala Harris, what would you conclude right now based on everything you've seen and heard? Well, if I could vote in the American election, I would vote for Trump. And I don't trust Harris. Now, do I trust Trump? Well, he was president for four years. Like, look, the best predictor of someone's future behavior is their past behavior. If you're trying to hire someone and you have documented history of their efforts in precisely the domain that you're attempting to hire for and the evidence is clear and, and valid, you use that in favor of all other predictive, what would you say, predictive markers. Mm. So I think it's more appropriate for me as a clinician who knows the psychometric literature to point out that independent of Trump's personality, which tends, by the way, to be a relatively weak predictor of behavior, mm. It's intelligence that's the best predictor and then personality. We have a documented track record. Okay, so what do we know about Trump? Well, as far as I'm concerned, we know this. Decent economic performance, markedly stable international situation, no wars, plus, and that's something, no mm -hmm. wars. Mm -hmm. Plus, he established the Abraham Accords, and they've held even after October Seventh, and everybody in the State Department told the Trump administration that that was that putting that agreement together was impossible. Now, of course, it's the Abraham Accords that have infuriated and frustrated the bad actors in Iran, and that's pretty much the entire political class there, mm. and fomented October 7th and produced this catastrophe that's unfolding. But putting that at the feet of Donald Trump is a very ill advised thing to do. Mm. So I would say, with regards to Trump, well, we know what a Trump presidency would be like, but there's something else to consider too, because you might say, well, you know, that was round one and now it's round two and Trump is older. And although I think he's actually modified his behavior to some degree as a consequence of being beat up so thoroughly mm. over the last five years, and although he's a bit defensive, he's also less blustery and more human, which I think is a big plus. But for me, the other thing that I've seen really switch that's really been positive for me is that Trump has pulled a lot of hyper powerful people together around him. Mm. Musk, Tulsi Gabbard, um, Vivek Ramaswamy, Robert F. Kennedy, mm. most of whom would have been Democrats in yeah. anything approximating a sane and normal world. And so you see, my sense is that somebody whose narcissistic impulses are out of control because Trump is a flamboyant and dominating mm. character who likes the public light. So you think, well, you know, does he tilt too far in the narcissistic direction? It's like, well, why would he share the spotlight with the rest of this crew? And the other thing that we should consider is that, look, man, I would vote for Trump if for no other reason than Musk himself has already agreed to head something like a Department of Governmental Efficiency yeah. in the U.S. It's like, okay, yeah. enough said. You know, and then Kennedy is bringing the public health crisis into mm. the political realm. And both those two things are revolutionary. I would also you know, say... Ramaswamy um, seems to be... Go, yeah, go I mean, ahead. Ramaswamy is a very smart guy as well. I, I completely agree with you um, on that. Also, I think that Trump has shown with these assassination attempts something very surprising that I suspect a lot of people would not have expected, and that is genuine personal courage. I mean, the first time when he was yeah. actually he, shot, to insist on getting yeah. back up, and to punch the air defiantly was a remarkable thing to do. But I thought what even That's more sure. remarkably was a week later, he was back on stage at another rally with an even bigger crowd, like nothing had happened. I spoke to him at night and he was, you know, very gung-ho. I'm just going to keep keep doing it. They're not going to stop me. That is personal moral courage. I, I don't think you ever know whether you have it until it happens. And then you saw again with this latest one, you know, he was cracking jokes immediately afterwards, saying, well, I wish I could have finished my birdie putt. Uh, again, uh, the reaction, I mean, I, I, it's a quality of Trump that we haven't really seen until you see it. And you're never quite sure how people will respond when there are genuine threats to kill them. And he's actually been you know, shot it, it, and then nearly got killed again. And yet he's back out there continuing with the campaigning. So whatever you think of Trump, 
I do think on the personal courage aspect, he's shown a lot of it recently. Yes, grace under pressure, but also you pointed to something else, is that he was up cracking jokes. You know, Hitler wasn't well known for his sense of humor. Mm. And the thing about Trump, and you can't deny this, Trump is a funny bastard. Right. He's funny. He'll say daring things mm. just because they're comical. He's really good at it. And even his Twitter usage, his ex usage, Twitter, of course, mm. because he's not really using the platform now, um, impulsive, uh, entertaining, mm. unbelievably cutting and funny mm. in a stand up comedian sort of manner. And, mm. you know, that just doesn't go well with the tyrannical personality because tyrants aren't well known for being able to tolerate the court jester. Let's put it that way. And so Trump is tough and funny. The other thing about Trump you got to think about too is, you know, is he ambitious? Well, I don't think it's ambition that's driving his mm. pursuit of this second term. I mean, first of all, Trump's an old man. And second of all, he's already president and he's as famous as you can get. Yeah. And you might say, well, his ambition is so overweening that you know, it's compelling him forward regardless. And I don't actually think so. I actually think that what happened was that Trump accidentally became president, shocked the hell out of him. And then he got some sense of exactly how unstable and corrupt the DC swamp had become. Mm. And he started to take the role seriously. Mm. And now I think he's taking it even more seriously. And that's part of why he's building this coalition. I think he made a dreadful mistake in the debate with Kamala Harris because well, first of all, he didn't highlight the Biden laptop mm. spectacle, which is like a, a bit of political maneuvering that outdoes any deviance that I've ever seen mm. since the beginning of my political awareness, mm. including everything that went around on around Richard Nixon, mm. who was impeached for his much lesser sins. Um, Trump has gathered these people around him and he's ready to move forward. Now, he didn't make a case for that in the damn... no. Debate. I, I thought he was you know, actually. He didn't say, Look, I thought I'm he had old. a bad yeah, debate. Ahead, actually, I, I thought that she, she played him, rather cleverly. She played to his narcissism. Let's call it. I think what it is a bit about the crowd sizes, about all that kind of stuff. And rather than him, laser like focusing on her weakness, which is that after four years, the country clearly is not in a better place. That's why she couldn't answer that question, and skewering her on her actual paucity of policy knowledge. I mean, she doesn't seem to know what she would do if she ran the country. She sort of played into his hands of allowing himself to be goaded and getting into a bit of a street fight and then saying crazy stuff about cats and dogs and so on and so on. Um, conversely, if you were looking at her right now, yeah, yeah. How do you yeah. psych psychoanalyze Kamala Harris? OK, well, let's let's give the devil his due to begin with. One of the market things I have seen happening with the Democrats mm. since this switch in leadership is their movement away from the radical left. And so I'd like to give them credit for that. I think now, is it real? Well, maybe. Some of me doesn't care if it's real, even if it's performative, even if it's purely performative, mm. it's long overdue and very welcome. And so you don't hear Kamala talking much about the climate crisis, which no. I'm perfectly happy about because I think that's an absolute load of anti-human rubbish in the main. And uh, the more leftist types within the Democrat Party have been effectively sidelined, at least as this campaign has progressed. Mm. So, you know, thumbs up on that regard. Having said that, on the principle that previous performance is the best indicator of future performance, Kamala's had her time in the White House. Now, you might say the vice presidency is a secondary role, but if you're the sort of person that would only allow the vice presidency to be a secondary role, then maybe you're not fit to be president. You don't have enough force of character. And we've already seen what a Biden administration looks like. And what I see the Biden administration look like, I mean, America is such an economic powerhouse that it's still trudging along, rampaging along like a bull in a china shop like it always does. But... Foreign policy has been a complete bloody world-ending disaster mm. under the Democrats. They haven't stood up to Iran, which is a pack of vipers mm. without compare. And we have this terrible, brutal, and I think unnecessary war going on between Russia and Ukraine, which could spiral out of control at any moment and is highly likely to. And so 
that's on Harris and the Democrats, and that's a major issue. So, and then what we might say, well, what will we get under Kamala? And maybe it's the case that the move away from the radical left is real, although I'd need a lot more evidence before I would believe that. Yeah. But the easiest thing to predict is another four years of the same thing. Yeah. Like, why wouldn't you predict that? It's it's not like she's the only one calling the shots. And as you already pointed out, maybe we could have more confidence that she would be a transformative leader, pull the Democrats to the center. What would you say? Act in a stellar manner on the foreign policy front and put the economy in order. Well, we'd be a lot more convinced of that if she was... 10 times more policy oriented than she appears to be. I completely but agree. Yeah. Yeah. I've never seen a candidacy focused so much on image in my life in any country.